What's up, fam? Time for another out of this world story from our space. Me, 29 male, with my wife, 25 female. Five years together, three years married. She just called me to tell me she cheated on me Saturday night while out of town on work. My wife just called me about three hours ago and told me that she cheated on me this past Saturday. Let me give you a bit of a backstory. My wife suffers from some undiagnosed mental issues, mostly panic attacks, anxiety, some form of depression, mostly just self-hatred. She sometimes breaks down. I've always been there to support her, and we've always gotten through it. A few months ago, she accepted the same job as me and went to a different state for training that normally lasts approximately four months. As of this weekend, she is two weeks away from finishing training and then coming home. On Friday, she messaged me telling me that she was having a bad mental weekend and wanted to cut out everything for the weekend. She deactivated her Facebook account and we went from messaging all the time to barely messaging at all and some short responses. It's not out of the ordinary for her to have bad days, though I've never seen her be this bad. She told me she had wanted to hold herself up in her room and just not leave and be left alone. I tried to respect that decision, but I did send her a bunch of pictures of our animals as a way to try and make her feel better. We have four cats and two dogs. Saturday, we were talking every once in a while, but not really a conversation, mostly just a sentence or two, here or there, every couple of hours. I ended up getting a Snapchat from her in the evening, showing her in the hallway with some of her training friends, both male and female, drinking together. I was kind of hurt that she was feeling well enough to go out, well, say in I guess, with friends, but not enough to talk to me. I feel like even though we have had arguments before, we never stopped talking like this before. I ended up not talking to her for most of Saturday night. Sunday was much of the same, barely talking, and that was that. All of Sunday, I had a huge pit in my stomach, fearing the worst. I called her after her classes and asked if we were okay, to which she responded yes, and that she loved me. Then, an hour after that phone call, she called me back, drunk Saturday night, and slept with one of her classmates. She claimed that they had both gotten completely drunk. Several of the other classmates were vomiting from drinking too much, and that's how she ended up going to his room that night. She also claimed that after she sobered up a bit, she went to another one of her female friend's rooms and stayed up crying till 3 a.m. I feel like I have identified two issues related to this problem. Drinking. I have told her before that I think she drinks too much and that she needed to cool her jets. She has told me a few times before that she agreed with me, but it never really completely stopped. Mental issues related to anxiety and self-hate, which also includes the feeling of being unloved. I have told her for the time being that, one, she needs to stop drinking altogether, and two, she needs to get serious help for her mental issues, and three, we need to go to couples counseling once she gets back. I feel bad forcing her to go see a therapist, since I feel like seeing a therapist only works if you want it to work but I don't know what else to do. I don't feel bad telling her no more drinking. I do believe in the love languages. I always said my love language was through physical things, hugs, kisses, presents, and sex. Her love language has always been to acts, like doing chores, etc. Things that don't cost money, basically. I am certainly not perfect, and don't pretend to be. I am incredibly lazy, so most of the time, I don't do house chores on time, or at all, and will mostly forget to do things unless it's something I really want done. She hates spending money on things and has always had an incredibly low sex drive. I feel like she doesn't understand my language and I don't speak her language. Also, the fact she has always had a low sex drive was never an issue for me. I understand that sex isn't the only thing in a relationship, but the fact that she went and had sex with another person despite that just makes it feel 10 million times worse. I am basically asking for advice or help and kind of venting to strangers on the internet because I can't really talk to any of my friends or family about this. If we do end up working things out, I don't want them to look at her through colored lenses. I'm not here to make her out to be the devil. She's an amazing woman who has done something so terrible to me. I don't know what to do anymore. All right, folks of the community, let them have it. T.O. It starts us off with, since you self-describe as incredibly lazy, I'm not sure of advice that recommends a path forward that takes energy is a right approach here. Unfortunately, literally all of my ideas require you putting energy into things. I would demand separation for at least a month, but that requires maintaining a house by yourself, taking care of pets, all that. Couples counseling should be down the road a bit, 
She needs to work on herself first, while separated. Unfortunately, it sounds like if you went down this road, she'd likely sleep around to fill the void. Gosh, I'm exhausted myself just thinking about this. I think your issues are above our pay grade. Sorry, man. The OP steps in to defend himself a little bit. I might be over-exaggerating my laziness. I maintain the house, and all the pets right now. She has been gone for the last two months, and was gone for two months a while back. The house is clean, the pets all alive, nothing on fire. I'm not afraid to put in effort, especially when it's needed, even if I don't want to. I just generally don't put in as much effort for things I don't want to do if someone else is there to pick up the slack. That's what really upsets her the most, I believe. She knows I can do the cleaning, I just put it off until later, and she ends up doing it first. KF adds a comment. If you're committed to making this work, and there are 100 other issues to address besides the chores, I recommend a chore chart. Each week, you both have your share of the chores, and you commit to getting them done by the end of the week, bedtime Sunday, or whatever day you designate. She promises to not do your chores for you, and you promise you'll get them done, even if it's 11.59 Sunday, and to rushing around. This is, of course, separate from the much bigger issues of the cheating and drinking. But if it helps you in the next relationship, it's worth a try. Bonacity says, What I don't think you are seeing is that beside the home, work, and pet family, you are the support system and caregiver for the burden of her bad decisions, potential emotional and mental disorders, and complete lack of self-love and faith in herself. From the heavy drinking alone, she could truly be emotionally out of sorts. I say the above as initially someone who was in your shoes and took three years of my life to the point of emotional burnout to realize my ex wasn't getting better and I needed to take care of myself. On top of that, the lasting toxicity of that time period sneakily helped me become just like her because the emotional stain sticks around for a goddamn long time. If you disagree with what I've said above, consider this. If she knows her mental health is a burden to both of you, why hasn't she tried to get better? If she knows her drinking is a problem, why hasn't she tried to stop? It's because you accept her as she is, and while that's admirable, you've proven to her, you'll put up with all of it. When you combine that with a person who knows they have a lot about themselves to address and work on, what's the easiest path to take? It's not changing. Because dealing with feeling guilty about the pain her behavior and decisions cause is far less terrifying of a reality than facing who she really sees deep down inside. And who bears the burden for all this turbulence? Who then fixes the mess and makes dinner? Who then makes her feel better, gives her love and comfort? You. Truth I set you free says, You are not lost, but more in denial. Let me ask you this. When she has these breakdowns with you, does she get drunk and have sex with you? Maybe I misunderstood you, but didn't you claim when she has these breakdowns with you, she speaks a different language, which does not include sex with you, but feelings of hate and anger? She got drunk to remove any inhibitions holding her back to cheat. Courage in a bottle. Courage to set aside her morals to cheat. These were no accidents but plans, including cutting off communications with you before she got drunk. I think it's time for you to go speak some divorce lawyer language. A deleted account's comment? Dude, cheating is not a single mistake. Like, oh, I got drunk. She made tens of mistakes that led to cheating. Her first mistake was to cut you off. Then get together with the classmate. Then drink and allow him to escalate. Then make a first move, guess. Then drink more so she can blame someone. Then agree to move somewhere else. Then to go to his room. This doesn't just happen by accident. This was all intentional. You're in denial and this will repeat again. No woman will respect a man if he forgives her for cheating. She'll cry and want to be together and claim so. But deep down and in the coming months, you'll lose all respect from her. Cut her off now. A comment from Coca-Cola Kid says, To be straightforward with you, you seem very calm and forgiving. You need to take time to think things through before jumping into decisions. I take it you have not seen your wife face to face since the incident. You need to get all the facts that you can, as this may have been going on for weeks. Check your social media, including phone. Do you know anyone there who could give you details of what has been going on since the training began? What remorse has your wife shown? I am like others. Do not use her mental health and drink abuse as an excuse. If she can work, then she can function. Our next thought from ABG Joe 135. 
I hate seeing people always jumping to leave the relationship at a moment's notice. That being said, I also think cheating well deserves that. However, it also sounds like you want to give her a chance. More power to you, but set some boundaries. Get counseling. Figure out in a safe space how to communicate your needs and wants better and how to follow through. Trust will take a long time to rebuild, and it's up to you all to figure out if and how it can be fixed. If you're a reader, I recommend a book titled The Affair Proof Marriage. It's obviously not a perfect science, but it does a great job of explaining needs and communication and how these breakdowns lead to affairs. She's completely wrong for cheating, and that's not on you, but both of you need to work at this relationship if you want it to recover at all. Kudos to you for wanting to give it a shot. That's a strong and an admirable thing. But if she isn't willing to put in the same work, you've got a decision to make. Our last comment comes from Sky Full of Song. You don't have to make a decision now. I'd give yourself plenty of time to figure this out. I would suggest couples therapy ASAP. I think it's a good sign she told you right away because she clearly felt bad and didn't want to hurt you more by lying. I also highly doubt your wife had sex with someone and enjoyed it. Some women have sex with men they don't know or don't respect to punish themselves or just feel something in the moment. I really think your wife and you two as a couple need a lot of work to survive this. It takes a while to find a good therapist, and you and your wife may meet with quite a few before finding one you both like. Also, if you choose not to continue your relationship, remember you're not responsible for her. Good luck.